Hi guys, this is Miss Gold. Today's lesson is Module 1, Lesson 6, representing proportional relationships with equations. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students use the constant proportionality to represent proportional relationships by equations in real-world contexts as they relate the equations to a corresponding ratio table and or graphical representation. Some points to remember. Proportional relationships have a constant ratio or a unit rate. The constant ratio or unit rate can also be called the constant of proportionality, which we learned in the last lesson. And we learned that we can obtain that constant of proportionality, m, by taking our output and dividing it by the input, so y divided by x. Now, what we're going to do is basically rearrange this equation. So I'm going to take this equation here. And I want to get rid of the x here, so I'm going to do the opposite operation. I see division here, so I'm going to multiply both sides by x. That's going to cancel my x's here. x divided by x is 1. 1 times y is y, leaving us with x times m, which I'm just going to rearrange using the commutative property and write as m times x. And you'll notice that that gives us the same equation that we have below. So the equation for proportional relationships is y equals m times x, where m is the constant of proportionality, x is the input, and y is the output. Just to note, we mentioned this in the last lesson, that variables don't always have to be x and y. Um, you just have to know what your input and output are so you can put the correct variable in the correct spot. Okay, let's take a look at example one. Your mother has accelerated into the interstate beginning a long road trip and you notice that the low fuel light is on, indicating that there is a half gallon left in the gas tank. The nearest gas station is 26 miles away. Your mother keeps a log where she records the mileage and the number of gallons purchased each time she fills up the tank. Use the information in the table below to determine whether you will make it to the gas station before the gas runs out you know that you can determine the amount of gas that her car consumes in a particular number of miles, then you can determine whether or not you can make it to the next gas station. So the first thing we notice here is that we have the mother's gas records, which involves gallons of gas and miles driven. And the first thing you actually want to decide is which part depends on the other for its outcome. In other words, which is the dependent variable, the gallons of gas or miles driven. So if we think about this scenario, we know that if you have a certain number of gallons of gas in your gas tank, that will determine how many miles you can drive. So this tells us that the miles driven is dependent upon the gallons of gas, meaning the gallons of gas is the input and the miles driven is the output. And we can use any variable for this situation. It's really up to you to choose what you would like to use for your variables. If we're going to use um, anything other than X and Y, you definitely want to define those variables. So we'll make sure that we do that. First thing we need to do is find the constant of proportionality and explain what it represents in this situation. So what I've done here is I have added a column to our table for the constant of proportionality. Now we know that the constant of proportionality is m equals output divided by input. So we just determined that the miles driven is our output y and the gallons is the input x. So for each of these, I'm going to take the output and divide it by the input. And for each of these, we will get 28. So in the context of this situation, our constant of proportionality is 28. And this means the car goes 28 miles on one gallon of gas. Part B says write an equation that will relate the miles driven to the number of gallons of gas. Now, we know that the general equation is going to be y equals mx. And 
you can use x and y, but you can also change your variable. Let's stick with x and y for this particular example. And you'll notice that they did not define any variables for us. I chose to put in x and y up here. So what we need to do is actually define our variables. And we do that using a let statement. So we're going to say let x equal the number of gallons of gas. And we'll say let y equal the number of miles. So in this case, we're going to stick with x and y. So the only thing I have to substitute into my equation is our constant of proportionality. And I know that this is a proportional relationship because in our table, we see that all three of our elements got a constant of 28. So we just need to plug in our 28. Notice x and y are going to stay the same in this situation because we chose x and y as our variables. All right, let's take a look at C. Knowing that there is a half gallon left in the gas tank when the light comes on, will she make it to the nearest gas station? Explain why or why not. Now we learned in here that there is a half gallon left in her tank. And from our previous question, we created the equation y equals 28x. Now, in this, we learned a value that is representing a gallon of gas or a certain number of gallons of gas that is our x variable. So we're actually going to substitute a half gallon in for x. And anytime you substitute and there's more than one thing on that side of the equation, I would suggest putting them in parentheses. So I'm going to say 28 parentheses 1 half. So if I'm going to multiply 28 and 1 half, I get 14. So that tells us, if we look back in the beginning, the nearest gas station is 26 miles away, but she only has 14 miles that she can go on a half tank of gas. So that really tells us that she's not going to have enough gas to get there. So we'll say no, she has enough gas for 14 miles, but the nearest station is 26 miles away. Parts D and E are going to show you how you can use your equation in a couple different ways. Part D says, using the equation found in Part B, determine how far your mother can travel on 18 gallons of gas. So this one, you'll see, is very similar to the previous question where we plugged in a half gallon. This time we're just plugging in 18 gallons. So I'm going to start with the equation. And I'm going to substitute 18 in for x. And again, I'm going to put that in parentheses because there's more than one element on this side of the equation. And when we multiply those two, you end up with 504. Now, this is a real world situation, so you want to make sure you put some context to your answer. So this actually is going to be 504 miles. Part E says, using the equation found in Part B, determine how many gallons of gas would be needed to travel 750 miles. So you can see this one is actually slightly different. Instead of being given the gallons, we need to find the gallons because we're given the miles. So let's, again, start with the equation. And I'm going to substitute in the element that I know, which is our y value. That represents the number of miles. So we're going to substitute in 750. Now, I don't need to put that in parentheses because there's no other elements on that side of the equation. Now, what you notice here is that in all of the other questions we did, we had y by itself. Now, we're trying to solve for the number of gallons x, but it's not by itself right now. It has a 28 next to it. So what we need to do is get rid of that. So our process for solving equations is going to start with drawing the wall. Once I draw the wall, the idea is to look at what operation is with the 28 and the x, and then you're going to use the opposite operation to get rid of it. So here, I have 28 times x. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide the side by 28. 
And what you have to remember is you're essentially doing a balancing act here. It's an equation, so one side is equal to the other. But if you do something to one side, it's no longer equal unless you also do the same exact thing to the other side. So I'm also going to divide this side by 28. Here, we know 28 divided by 28 is 1, so I'm going to cancel these because 1 times x is just x. And 750 divided by 28 gives us 26.8. And again, for a final answer, you want to put that in the context of the situation. So this is 26.8 gallons. Let's take a look at example 2. Andrea is a street artist in New Orleans. She draws caricatures, which are cartoon-like portraits of tourists. People have their portrait drawn and then come back later to pick it up from her. The graph below shows the relationship between the number of portraits she draws and the amount of time in hours needed to draw the portraits. Now, it's pretty important here that we know the unit is in hours. And you'll notice that what they have given us is not a table, but they actually gave us a graph to present the information. And so we want to first look at this graph and see what are the different elements in it. The first thing that I notice is the x-axis is the time spent drawing the portraits, which we learned up here, that time is in that unit of hours. The other thing you want to notice is that this is defining the variable for us. They have a T right here, and it's a capital T. So anything that represents time in our equation is going to be represented by capital T. Over on the y-axis, that represents the number of portraits drawn. And again, they've defined the variable for us using the letter n. Let's look at a. It says write several ordered pairs from the graph and explain what each coordinate pair means in the context of this graph. So when I'm choosing ordered pairs, if I'm moving along here, I don't necessarily know what those points are. So what I'm going to look for are called distinct points. And distinct points, you can find them by moving along the graph, and you're looking for a point where the grid lines crisscross right behind it. So I don't see any here, but you'll notice right here, the grid lines crisscross directly behind that. So as I move along, looking for other points, I see there's one right here. We have the grid lines crisscrossing behind them. And my final one, none here, none here, here's one. Again, that's a distinct point because the grid lines are crisscrossing behind that graph. All right, so let's write our ordered pairs. So we start with a parenthesis, and this is the ordered pair 2, 3. My second one is the ordered pair 4, 6. And my third one is the ordered pair 6, 9. And we're asked to put it in the context of the situation. So we know that the 2 is representing the time spent in hours, and the 3 is the number of portraits. So this means in 2 hours, she draws three portraits. And so the other two points will look very similar to this. So this one means in four hours, she draws six portraits. And this one means in six hours, She draws nine portraits. Okay, let's take a look at part B. It says determine the constant of proportionality and explain what it means in this situation. Now, we just got three different points, distinct points, off of our graph. And if we take a look at the graph, we know that this is a proportional relationship because in a previous lesson we learned that you can look at a graph and if it is a line that goes through the origin that it is in fact a proportional relationship. So I don't have to test out every single point on that graph, which is actually impossible because there's infinitely many points on this graph. We do want to choose a distinct point on the graph. So we have three that we chose. Um, why don't we just do four, six? 
Now we learned that the constant of proportionality m is equal to output divided by input or y divided by x. So let's just plug in our elements. So the y in this case is 6 and the x in this case is 4 and when you divide those two you get 1 and 1 half. And you can write this as a fraction, an improper fraction, or a decimal. It doesn't make any difference. Part C says write the equation that would relate the number of portraits drawn to the time spent drawing the portraits. So in this case, we need to remember that our variables were defined for us. So we don't need to do let statements in this case. And also, I want to note that they chose uppercase variables, which is not something we would normally choose. But since they chose them as uppercase, we need to leave them as uppercase. So let's start with our general equation, y equals mx. I'm going to plug in the things that I know. And if I look back at the graph, I know that the output y is the capital N and the input x is the capital T. So we're going to replace y with n. m we just found to be 1 and 1 half. And x we're replacing with capital T. So this is the equation that we could use to find any number of portraits or any number of hours. In this lesson, you have learned that if a proportional relationship is described by the set of ordered pairs that satisfies the equation y equals mx, where m is a positive constant, then m is called the constant of proportionality. The constant of proportionality expresses the multiplicative relationship between each x value and its corresponding y value. How do you find the constant of proportionality? You're going to divide the unit rate y divided by x, which equals m. How do you find an equation for a proportional relationship? y equals m times x, substituting the value of the constant of proportionality in place of m. What is the structure of proportional relationship equations and how do we use them? x and y values are always left as variables, and when one of them is known, they are substituted into y equals m times x to find the unknown using algebra.